Thank you for the word of Quran. I get down in hand. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, good morning. Um, it's an honor and pleasure to be here uh, among this uh, very exclusive uh, gathering. Um, I'm also very glad that we have uh, so many speakers and guests from Germany. Um, as I personally consider German cars uh, more or less the benchmark in the automotive industry. So it's no surprise that the German tuners uh, are also the leading and benchmark setting companies such as uh, Rados, for example, who is the biggest independent Mercedes tuner worldwide, and also Abt, who comes from a very small city called Kempten in Germany, who is also uh, the biggest Volkswagen Audi tuner, and of course other very popular names and well known names like Alpina and Lala and AC Schlitzer. There is a very close link between safety, between safe tuning and modifications, and motorsport and road safety. And um, I'm very happy that we will be tackling all these issues here during this conference today and tomorrow. Raising the public and media awareness about car modifications will definitely result in a better understanding of motorsport and Formula One in the UAE and Middle East. It will also result in a bigger motorsport industry in the UAE, and it will definitely result in better road safety conditions and reducing road fatalities on the roads of the UAE and the Middle East. We will need professional TV shows and professional and experienced presenters in order to make modifications and motorsport more popular in the Middle East. And this is uh, one of the things we'll be talking about tomorrow um, in my presentation, so please not miss it. Today, um, I have the pleasure of introducing Mrs. Farah Zaroni, uh, who will be our first speaker today. Mrs. Farah Zaroni has a uh, a uh, bachelor's degree in chemistry from Cairo University and is a postgraduate degree in public administration from the Zayed University in Abu Dhabi. Um, at the Emirates Standardization and Metrology Authority, as much she's working as the Director of Standards Department, where she plays a key role in bringing out standards and technical regulations, which are aimed to elevate the international trade value and also to ensure the safety of the residents. She represents the UAE at national, regional, and international level events in the field of standard animation. She's also chairman for Halal Food Committee and secretary for Halal Cosmetic at OIC. And at GS O level, she has the Halal Working Group and model position of chairman of the Technical Committee for Cosmetics and Personal Care Products, as well as Chemical and Text Textile Sector. Please uh, join us in the podium. Start the morning. I have uh, also the pleasure of announcing Mr. Walid as Sakhar. He is uh, Head of Conformity Certificate Section at the Conformity Assessment Department. Um, since 2005 until now, he had been the Head of the Conformity Certificate Section at the GCC Standardization Organization, GSO. He is also a member of the GCC Transporting and Road Engineering Committee, responsible for setting and publishing GCC safety regulations and roads for transporting and road design. Since from 1999 to 2004, he was the supervisor, supervisor of conformity certification in Saudi Arabian Standardization Organization, SASO. And from 88 to 1999, he was also responsible for preparing the standards for mechanical products as self mobile machines, as motor vehicles, heavy machining, agriculture equipment. Please uh, welcome Mr. Walid Asada. Is obviously not here at the room yet. Okay, he's probably coming in a second. So, Mrs. Farah, please, um, please feel free to, to, uh, to start your presentation. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, really my pleasure being with you today. Uh, my name is Farah Zaroni and I'm the Director of Standards in ISMA. In order to start telling you a bit about our new regulation for modification of vehicles, we'll give you a small picture about ISMA, our role and responsibility in this region. Well, as I said, ISMA is the national standardization body of the United Arab Emirates. So we issue standards, technical regulations, and schemes. ISMA's strategic goals in different 
fields, but mainly in safety, providing safety, protection, consumers, and environment, as well as supporting the national economy by helping our small and medium industry to achieve the international target, international quality, international safety requirements, so they can compete not only internally, but on the international level. ISMA's mandate in different fields. As I said, we are in safety because this is our priority. So we provide safety requirements and features and products for consumers. We are in health and environment protection, in quantity in terms of legal metrology, in quality and energy efficiency, and lately we are in halal. ISMA works with national, regional, and international bodies. So we are an ISO member, so we represent ISO in UAE. We are also part of other organizational, uh, regional-wise and international-wise. We are part of the GSO, Gulf Standardization Organization, with the other six GCC countries. We are part of IEC in terms of electrical appliances and OML in terms of legal metrology, with IAC in terms of accreditation of laboratories. And finally, we are a part also of CIMIC, the standardization metrology of Islamic countries. We believe that we cannot work alone. We, we work closely with our partners. Our partners are the government, authorities as well as private sector. So we work very closely with industry. We ask them to be our partners. So in order to make the standards, we believe that let them be a standard maker instead of standard taker. We work very closely with the customer <coughs> customs and the federal and local level. So any products enter UAE through the entry points are being checked by our customs. We work very closely with the market surveillance with bodies. They can be either government or private sector. So what is being inspected in the market are, are the cooperation between ISMA and the private sector or the government authorities. In terms of food, we have the food control authorities and in other products we have the municipalities and other federal government bodies that helps us in maintaining quality and safety in the market. We work very closely with the national lab because we believe without R&D, we never achieve the international level of standards. So our standards are basically depends on the R&D, depends on the results that comes directly from the national lab and from private sector as well. And of course, since we provide safety to consumers, we work very closely with the health authorities. As I mentioned, we provide standards, technical regulations, and schemes. And through my first two slides, I've just mentioned that we work closely with the con concerned authorities with our partners. So in order to make our technical regulation and schemes after we go through certain steps. We start with a benchmark for a certain topic. Let's take our example today, modification of vehicles. And then we create our technical committee. It can be also a working group, representative from the government and private sector, and experts in the certain fields. So we work closely with the working group in order to issue the first draft of the technical regulation or scheme. Then the scheme is being circulated internally in UAE to the government, authorities, and private sector, and externally through the WTO notification with page. By giving 60 days as per the agreement of UAE with the WTO, we are ready to receive all the comments that are being sent to us, either externally or internally through our different channels. The working groups, again, meet, study the comments, and get the final draft 
of the technical regulation or scheme, which is sent to our board of directors. Our board of directors is chaired by Dr. Rashid Ahmed Bifahad, the Minister of Environment and Water, and representative from the government authorities on both the federal and local. Then it's sent to the cabinet for the legal approval of the technical regulation or scheme. Finally, after the approval of the cabinet, we publish it in the official gazette and giving the exact time frame for the grace period. And this is how we implement our regulation. After the implementation, it is the time to review and measure the impact of our regulation. There is also a team who is again coming into the picture and study all the comments that comes back from implementation and then further action is, be is being taken based on the comments received. How we select a product or a certain product for a technical regulation or scheme? We go with the international practice and that by the risk assessment. So our schemes is being based basically on the low risk to high risk. Modification of vehicles is really one of the very top priority topics we have nowadays. So it lies in a really high risk level. That's why it's, it was really one of the top management requirements in ISMA and in, in, in the UAE. So. As I mentioned, we have created our working group in order to come up with the first draft. The working group is consists by ISMA as the process owner, Ministry of Interior, Ministry of Water and Environment, Roads and Transport Authority, RTA, the Automobile and Touring Club, and finally, Marseillas. And this is a word of appreciation. I should mention that, that we have taken the support and the technical inputs of SEMA, which is the Specialty Equipment Market Association from the United States, who was really a very good and valuable input with their comments and with their technical support in our the first draft of the regulation. a very brand new regulation. We have notified the WTO with it day before yesterday. So you still have 48 days, 50, sorry, 58 days for you to review the technical regulation and to come up with your comments and send it to SMS team. So again, we'll meet, we'll study the comments and it will be really valuable input from all of you because we consider you also our stakeholders. Your valuable input will be really good in order to come up with a very active and effective regulation. Our scope covers certain passenger vehicles. So we are talking mainly about used and new vehicles, modified by either addition, substitution, or alteration of vehicles, equipment, or system. We have excluded the motorcycle, trailers, caravans, and tractors. There will be two types of modification. First one, that you need to get an approval from the license department. The second type will no need any approval from the concerned authorities or the license department. So, Examples for modification that doesn't need any approval from license department, bumpers, car seats, fog lamps, and vehicle entertainment system, tires, excluding racing and slick tires. Other examples, flood lights, fuel additives, intake air filters, gear knobs, meters and gauges, radiators, roof racks, side skirts, ignition system. 
Examples of modification that needs you to get an approval from the licensing department. Engines, exhaust systems, suspension systems, seating arrangements, force induction system, supercharged and turbocharged, transmission, gearbox, hoods and canopies, seating arrangements, performance brakes, both parts. Well, I have selected certain items that needs an approval and I'll go through them. First of all, is the main important item is engine. So, replacement engine will be accepted if there's cases. Comply with the emission and noise standard. That's a UAE GSO, GSO standard and it should not exceed 95 decibels. Belongs to the same vehicle category. Comply with the emission standards GSO 1680. Upgrading of the appropriate parts and equipment like brakes, front and rear suspension, fire extension, and appropriate seat belt when the replacement engine is larger in power output than the original engine offered by the vehicle manufacturer. So you need to upgrade the parts if you are replacing your engine with an upper grade engine. The second item is the transmission or the gearbox. It is allowed to change it if both it works as manual, automatic, and vice versa. And if the movement does not affect the safety of the vehicle. And of course, installed as per aftermarket manufacturer's installation manual. The third item I'm covering today is the exhaust system. Installation of use of a non-original equipment after market part is allowed as long as it does not adverse affect emission performance mentioned in the GSO standard 16 By the way, our standards, UAE GSO are the same. So we are in order to upgrade our scheme to the GSO level, we have we are a part of the GSO organization, so we are using the same uh, standards that being applied in UAE and the other GCC countries. So this is one of the aim of the GSO that the, the spare parts or the, the vehicle itself is not being extra an extra cost because changing certain thing in one country makes it really more more expensive. And this is one of the main comments we are getting by the way every time we are introducing new regulations. Because what is being made for UAE is at the same time is being made for the other six GCC countries. Modification of vehicle exhaust system components may not cause the vehicle to emit more than 95 decibels, and I, I've explained this previously in, a, in an exhaust noise test report. Certain parts will require a test report, and it's mentioned in our standards. In case that certain test is required and they are not available in any UAE GS or standards, we'll go with the international practices and we will accept the international themes in this case. So you may bring a test report that are being accredited and approved internationally. Fuel system. Unmodified vehicles shall have a fuel system that is securely fastened to the vehicle so as not to interfere with the vehicle operation. As you see, safety of the vehicle, of course safety of passengers, are one of our main objectives. The components such as tank, tubing, hoses, and pump must be of flat roof design and be securely attached with the fasteners designed for that purpose. All fuel system, vent lines and fuel lines shall exactly correspond to the route 
of original fuel line. So you should make sure that they are at the same root of the original fuel line. They must extend outside of the passenger's compartment and be positioned as not to be in contact with the high temperature surface or moving component. The fuel pipe should be lit in the original route of the fuel system. The use of press fitting or a in hose and in high flow or high pressure fuel system is mandatory. I have this is the last slide. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, there's two slides. This okay, is, uh, I, I, I just want to tell that uh, okay. I'll just go through it. So we have to okay. The replaced of uh, full brake system shall be certified in accordance with the UAE G Snow Standard ECE13 or equivalent international standard and pass the brake test. So we are working closely with our GSO member, uh, uh, organization. So in order to get a certification for any test required, if it is not available in our GSO or UAE standard, we will approve and accept an international test in this regard. The above requirements are not applicable to parts such as brake pads, brake disc, employed in partial modification. By the way, we have also issued a new regulation about the spare parts. You are free to have a look at that and, and send your comments. I believe that they will be really valuable for us in order to come up with a final regulation. Because once it is approved by the board of director of ISMA and goes to the cabinet, it will be in place. So there will be no chance to modify or change the regulation. Now, where we are now? Uh, as I mentioned the day before yesterday, we have notified the WTO with our new regulation giving them 60 days. So 58 days remain from the notification period. Uh, by December 2004, we will also internally within the UAE will be sending our draft regulation to all the authorities, including our members in the working group and other authorities, private and government authorities in UAE. Usually we give them one month internally within UAE for their feedback. Then by February, 2014, which is the end of our notification period, we'll be receiving all the comments sent to us, either externally through the WTO notification web page or internally through ISMA's web page or within the committee itself. And we'll meet again to study and update the, the draft regulation and come up with a final draft which will go to ISMA's board of directors and then the cabinet. I've tried to cover quickly the regulation, but anyone needs to have a look on the regulation, please contact ISMA. We'll be really happy and glad to provide you with a draft so you can go through it and provide your value. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Sure, we'll have lots of um, questions for you later in our Q&A session, um, which will be at the end of this session, uh, hopefully after 20 or 25 minutes or so. And now let me welcome again Mr. Olid Sagar, who is the head of conformity certification section at the GCC Standardization Organization (GSO). We already had an introduction about you, Mr. Sagar, a couple of minutes ago when we started the session. Uh, Mr. Sarkar is um, since 2005 until November, until now, until now he is the head of conformity certificate section at the GSO. And from 1990 to 2004, he was the supervisor of conformity certification in Saudi Arabian Standardization Organization, SASO. Please have a warm welcome for me.
Uh, first of all, I would like to give you uh, a brief idea about my organization. Actually, I do belong to uh, GCC Standardization Organization. It is a regional organization that is goal to have a technical background for the, uh, 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 the common uh, market for the GCC countries. We are supporting uh, the goal of our leaders to have this uh, unified market by unifying the standards in the GCC countries, including Yemen. Also, uh, to have uh, and to be unified the conformity assessment uh, and, uh, of course, uh, including uh, the uh, meteorology activities. Uh, we are, uh, as a GSO member, uh, uh, the six countries of GCC, including Yemen, uh, have also established in this uh, field for motor vehicles uh, what we can call the certification scheme. Uh, every and each new vehicle that enters the market, uh, those vehicles are for the passenger car or MPVs, as SUVs, buses, and trucks. They should have this uh, GSO certification before entering uh, this market. Uh, this certificate that is to be sure that these vehicles comply with the safety requirements, comply with the level of emissions that are emitted by those vehicles, uh, to be uh, sure of uh, also uh, complying with the all regulations that have been adopted in GCC companies. We have started our certification scheme, started from uh, 2000. 2005, and uh, we still remain as, as the main source of certificates for motor vehicles. Uh, conformity, uh, of course, certificates is mainly targeting the safety issues. Of course, uh, 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 how to achieve this compliance? We ask all the manufacturers to provide us with the test report. Also, uh, a delegation that we nominated from BCC member go to these manufacturers have auditing visits and also witness those safety tests to be sure of compliance. We uh, formulated our regulations uh, referring globally to the uh, international standards, to those uh, regulations adapted in uh, most of the uh, countries that main producers of labor. Uh, I mean by that, uh, of course, uh, United States has the uh, federal standard, also uh, European regulations as uh, ECE requirements, and some of these actually requirements being adapted from, from Japan as uh, the main market share in, in our region. The design of the, uh, of, the, of the vehicles, and especially to comply with the impact, it is, it is really very complicated. And uh, that's what we should take uh, in, in our consideration when we modify those papers. Uh, uh, the huge effort that do done by the uh, manufacturers to comply with the, those requirements, those requirements uh, related to protection the passenger inside the vehicles, related to protection the pedestrians, and also related to the fuel integration, uh, not to catch fire after, after accidents, are hugely researched by these major motor vehicle companies. I think that cannot be done by individuals, and that cannot be done even by, by small organizations. Such uh, research like this need a huge bodies to do. Of course, those modifications of the vehicles sometimes are very, very useful for us, very useful to uh, service some special persons, which is uh, that field is for the uh, special need persons. We need to modify vehicles in this uh, type of, of, uh, of arrangements. Uh, those very important persons for us have the right to be transported and have the right to be transported properly. And uh, that, of course, uh, one of the uh, major modifications uh, that should be allowed in, the, in, in GCC countries. Uh, we have a very good example here in Dubai, actually. There is a taxis being modified for transporting for those special needs persons. And this is uh, really, really need to be proud here uh, of, 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 of
such as uh, some buses also should be modified to be uh, arranged for those special needs uh, persons. Uh, these are for the transporting of those persons. Sometimes they have even the right to the vehicle to be modified to be driven by them. And of course, this is a special arrangement that they need it, uh, depending on what, what the modification that need for, for a certain case. Another kind of modification that uh, for the vehicles is regarding the racing, racing and competition. And uh, what is really done for, for, for this uh, section uh, is done by uh, professional bodies. We should not be concerned much about that. Uh, and we are not uh, really uh, maybe discussing uh, the regulations of such activities uh, globally. Uh, this is being taken care of and globally. Uh, no need for, for any authorities to directly involve in this activity. The arrangement uh, and modification for racing cars is related to their uh, train power, related to their protection in, in, uh, in, in the uh, passenger compartment that to protect the, 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 the driver and, and the, the co driver. The other, and that's what's actually the main topic of our conference here, is that, uh, if I may say, the singularity, the most people that they need a unique vehicle, those people that they need a different color, a different vehicle, not uh, similar to those cars that have been driven by others. And of course, this right is, is, is can be accomplished when, uh, when that will not vary the safety of the vehicle. And uh, I think uh, everyone has this right. Uh, even though that some of the people, not only the, the color of the vehicle they need to use, and not only the shape, but even the sound of the vehicle, uh, it, it, is, it is really uh, uh, very nice to hear a different voice for those vehicles running in the road, when just they should be uh, in the limit of the noise level that that being, being organized. Uh, maybe the changes sometimes will violate the identification of the vehicles, and I will come to that uh, later. But anyway, uh, if it's not related to safety, it, uh, it, it will be really a very interesting uh, subject. Uh, some of people are trying to change the uh, power train, the speed, the acceleration, uh, even though that it is, has a side of dangerous, has, has a side of risk, but when it's controlled, uh, I think it is, it is the right for them to have it. Uh, some uh, uh, modifications are related to hobbying and, and camping. We, uh, we are really very eager to visit the desert and to go to uh, very far uh, places uh, that does not be reached by roads and does not be reached by, by service stations. And uh, these kind of, of uh, uh, I can say, uh, uh, hobbies it is, it is really uh, very recognizable in our area. Uh, but that needs sometimes uh, to modify the car to have uh, uh, maybe more power vehicles, maybe some accessories needed for the desert driving, and even sometimes additional tank for the fuel to have longer distance for, for them. And maybe this is, uh, uh, as been mentioned by Mrs. Pistar, uh, uh, there is a special safety concern for such uh, modifications like this. What is the concern that would be uh, related to modification? Actually, as, as, as an authorities, we have, we have two sides of, of these uh, uh, concerns. The first one is safety. As long as these modifications fulfill the uh, safety of the vehicles, they will not be a risk for those uh, passengers inside the vehicles or uh, the other driving in the roads or even to the pedestrian, I think uh, it will be accepted. The impact regulation, as I mentioned, this is a very complicated process. We should not, as a modified uh, activities, we should not uh, touch that, that uh, side. Uh, the main structure of the vehicle have been really carefully designed by the manufacturers themselves. Of course, when, when this design is being done uh, to, uh, and not being touched by, by the modification, that will be accepted. We would remain have these vehicles protecting those persons inside of it. Uh, 
Uh, another thing is, is for the, those components, that, that component which is being used in the notification. Uh, Ms. Farah has, has mentioned something about uh, the uh, numbers, and, and uh, I think it's very important to, to have also instruction about numbers, because numbers are actually are integrated in safety of the listing, and I see many of the modifications that happen for the vehicles that uh, has, has a registering uh, bumpers that is one not be safe for those walking in the streets. Uh, other, other part that I can mention is the, uh, the engine hood. There is a weak contact in the engine hood that to avoid, if there is any contact impact, that this hood can enter the passenger compartment and be harmful for those passengers, especially in the front seats. This design should be also taken into consideration when using those components in, in motor vehicles. One of the actually very good examples here in the United Arab Emirates is those uh, vehicles that have been retrofitted to be uh, working with gas, uh, LPG or CNG. This benchmark I think happened in, in Abu Dhabi and, and it's very good experience they have. They have this certification for components. They said it that itself the uh, connection of the uh, gas uh, pipes and also even for the valves. Uh, a very good example of how to uh, make uh, modification in motor vehicles with uh, safe precautions. Uh, also, uh, we mentioned the, the noise level. When, when we change the exhaust uh, uh, emission, when we, when we change any part of the vehicle, we have to uh, concern more about uh, the uh, regulations of the, the noise uh, level. We don't want the noise uh, uh, was polluted uh, vehicles being running in our roads at one Mr. Rogan, I hate to interrupt you. If we can wrap it up in the next five minutes so we can have, uh, have some yeah. minutes for the hearing sessions. Okay, that would be one, great. Thank you. Two minutes. The other concern, uh, actually, it's not being mentioned, I don't know why, but really there is another concern regarding the security. The identification of the data should be very clear. The registration should be reliable uh, uh, and, and being tracking uh, very well. Uh, the security is, uh, is, is very important when we are talking about crime use of those vehicles, when we are trying uh, to, to discuss about the smuggling, the smuggling that, that some vehicles be modified for these birds. We have to be very careful in this activity and we should be uh, very concerned in, in this field. Uh, there is many requirements, and uh, I, I should mention uh, some of these requirements being adapted uh, in Australia and in New Zealand. And uh, some of these are actually requirements in the United States related to the component itself. Uh, it's, it's very good to refer to these uh, uh, regulations when we will adapt uh, uh, some, some stuff in, the, in this, in this action. Uh, of course, GSO will be very happy to uh, receive. Uh, this regulation here in the United Arab Emirates, we have to reflect that uh, regulation in, in regionally, and that will be more effective because those vehicles will come to the United Arab Emirates. Maybe will come from the neighbor countries like uh, Saudi Arabia or Oman uh, or the other neighbor country, and we need to avoid that. I think if it's adapted regionally, we will have more effective uh, regulations.
you know the bumpers are, are, are acting on the roads like the mice and the blades if, if it's, it's uh, not uh, uh, being designed in, in, in a well designed and structured from a good material uh, we saw a lot of, of, of uh, bumpers